the cloud. Okay, we're now uh, live. Um, I just want to uh, basically make a statement to the effect that the uh, this meeting is being held uh, in accordance with uh, governmental regulations issued by the governor and the Commonwealth relative to remote participation meetings. Uh, a copy of this meeting will be made available uh, on the town's YouTube website. Uh, it is not being broadcast live, uh, but will be available as a recording. Uh, we have a duly constituted uh, board here, Josh and um, uh, Bruce are here, and we also have Jose as a, a, as a guest. So uh, the first order of business would be basically an update on the uh, wiring. I did talk to... Uh, Andy, today we have we had a police team meeting uh, this morning. We have them every other week uh, because we're building the police station, and we go over all the pride you know, RFIs, requests for information, PO, uh, P, uh, P, PCOs, uh, per, uh, uh, building change orders, things like that. And uh, then we have new business. And one of the issues we did talk about was that you guys had met out at the site uh, in Lakeville. Um, that there was a determination that we weren't going to use the cable that has electricity running through it, that we we're going to run a, a separate power line and a separate cable. Um, at this point, we discussed also, um, uh, I told them, you know, what the board or the committee had decided regarding uh, the use of the funds and that they wanted to get approval of those funds um before they're spent uh, i was reminded that those funds really aren't the cable advisory committees but they're the towns and as a result they're a, a function of the the board of selectmen yeah okay well anyway i'm, I'm not going to dispute that with you um the uh the general feeling is you know we're gonna we're we're uh, you know we're gonna get this project done one way or the other i want to, to be able to uh, have uh, the work done prior to the, uh, the building uh, being boxed up. And um, I had hoped, I'd asked Dean Newhall, who's one of the architects on the project, uh, he had been in contact with American Electrical, who is the subcontractor for the construction project and on all the electrical work. He, uh, I guess, uh, Andy had prepared a schematic showing uh, the, wh the where the wire is going to flow, uh, uh, identifying room 141 a as the console room, okay. uh, identifying that we're going to have a hot switch in the dispatcher's office, um, and that we're also going to have some kind of a light to show that, you know, the camera is live uh, so that... Uh, the dispatchers ultimately will have control over whether video is being uh, uh, recorded uh, in the uh, uh, the uh, function room uh, when we're meeting. I did not hear back from Dan regarding the price quote, uh, but uh, at this point, so I, I don't know when we have a dis when we have those numbers in, we're going to have to have a quick meeting. Uh, to turn turn it around um, and uh, and be able to provide those since we also discussed um, maybe not having the the um, the subcontractor uh, serve as the contractor for this this is just this portion of the work um, there may be some contractual issues that we would have to address in that so that may or may not be a, a possibility um, because we discussed, you know, the fact that we, if we were to, to have it paid for out of the Cable Advisory Committee, uh, the, the, the monies uh, that uh, are in the reserve, uh, uh, reserve for appropriations account, um, the, uh, the monies would then be paid to the, the vendor, to the contractor directly. And we talked about how that would work because we don't want to have an upcharge. So there's a whole bunch of things that are going on, moving pieces. Maybe Jose can fill us in in terms of what his interpretation of the situation is, and we can all discuss it from there. Yeah, um, first of all, it went really well. Um, the engineer um, was really 
on the ball and he understood exactly what I was asking him to do. Um, and he, he drew it out right, right then and there and had it done in a day or two. Um, so I was really happy with that progress. Um, the, in terms of the monies and how to pay for it, I understand what the issue is here. It is whether or not this falls under the contract to build the police station or not, and whether or not the monies that are allocated to the PEG access um, uh, funding can be used for this. Um, well, I know it can. Uh, you know that it is an, uh, an applicable use. It's a process and payment issue. I understand. Mm -hmm. so what I suggest you do is is talk to the project manager about that and whether or not the cable access fund can uh, refund or reimburse the project, the building project for those monies, whatever that is. Yeah. Um, the other option is to, um, and I don't recommend this, is, is just bring in another electrical contractor, put in, put in the pipes, put in, put in the wires and so forth, but your, your uh, general contractor may not agree to that. Yeah, that that's that's could potentially be an issue because they have care and control and custody over their electrical work that's being run through the building. Yeah, so that would be. I don't want to leave it for something we do after the fact. We could do that too. Uh, and talking to Andy, we were talking um, in terms of the uh, power actually doing uh, running the electrical power, but only uh, for the. Um, the cable itself, maybe just putting a conduit in so that we could then put a condiment, conduit into, and then having um, basically boxes that have covers on them that would yeah. be the mount for the cameras? No, the, you don't need mounts for the cameras. The cameras have their own mounts. They go right on the soffit. Uh, we discussed that with Andy. Uh, you just- right, Well, he didn't say that, okay. Yep, he understood that and uh, that's part of the plans. That, that, are, that are drawn up. The outlets are just simple outlet plates that show behind where the camera positions are that are on, on the bottom of, of, the, uh, of the soffit. So that's the outlets. And in front of that is we're gonna, we're, we'll, we will attach the cameras. So the outlets won't really be seen. Uh, there's no need for a box. The box is above the drywall, yes, in that soffit. Um, but I don't, I don't, the main, time and effort savings here is running those pipes so with with pull string in them so that you don't have to run the wires uh, individually uh, from the control room to the camera positions one at a time you just use the pull string to get the wires there does that make sense yeah i i have full confidence in our uh architect to, you know he this is a you know a 13 million dollar building can speak. Uh, you know i'm sure he's familiar with how to to do this kind of thing so we you know it, it, it you know that part of it i'm not really worried about so much uh the power part of it is like i said we are going to run the the power part of it in terms of a separate power line so that we can provide that in terms of the conduit for the uh, the cable portion of it that, uh, that that might be we might not run the cables all depends on the cost you know if, if it's affordable I know that there's been some pushback from the committee on about the money uh, in terms of whether you know they want to know how much it's going to be before they actually say let's go ahead and do this but it, one way or another we're going to get it done so well you know let me put my two cents in we, uh, I brought this up a couple of meetings ago, thinking that it would be beneficial to do it before the building is, is completed. Up until that point, nobody thought about anything like this. There was no conversation that I can see on the police committee or from anyone else. Is that correct? And if that is correct, then I'm starting to think now, because it's gonna be, seems to be a contest about who controls the money, who doesn't control the money, then maybe we ought to just say, as far as the, the this committee is concerned, we don't want to do it. Let's continue to go on the way we do it. We hire somebody to come in. It's not the most favorable thing to do. But on the other hand, if this is going to be a contest between, well, it's their money, it's our money, who's going to pay for it? Remind the cable committee that it's the town's money. 
Well, you know, I, I I'm, I'm I just saying you. that I'm not trying to pick a fight. Number one, no, I'm just being realistic here because I want to see it get done. done. I don't want it to come down to having, you know, be a six thousand dollar job, and and you say, well, that's too much money, and we can't do it. We have to. This is something we should get done while we have the opportunity to do that. I'm not saying it's a it's a contest between the cable and the board. The board wants this done. I guess that's the bottom line. Yeah, we do. But I mean, if it's going to be an issue, like, you know, we, there's a lot more to it than just running the cable down the road. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're talking, uh, uh, Jose said that the individual cameras are approximately $2,500 a piece. And we're talking, what, four of those, Jose? Canadian. You're, you're on mute. Three minimum, five maximum. Three minimum for the cameras. Yes. So if we're talking that much money for this project, I mean, the, the, the wiring should be, you know, secondary in cost wise. But the deal, but the thing is, let's talk about go one step further and say the use of this once these cameras are up, uh, is that room, is there any policies on that room that who, uh, who's going to use it as far as the planning board, selecting, yep. this, our committee, and yep. anyone else during that whole process? Because if they're going to limit the, the use of that room, uh, either the police chief or the board of selectmen or whatever, then we need to have that discussion as well before we spend the money to do it. We, are, we, we actually already have had that discussion. There is a policy in place. It is going to be available to various and sundry, you know, departments and committees. Um, we are going to, we have certain rules and regulations that we're not going to, we're going to require people not to bring food or drink into the room. You got to remember that this is a, it's a public room, but it's also the command and control center for the police and fire. Okay. Why are you shaking your head? Only in case of emergency. Yes, you are correct. But it is that the design of the room was to address a, um, have a place where we don't have to use a fire bay to, to have our command and control in a hurricane or in a snow emergency or any kind of natural, like the floods back in 2010. Well, that's the whole purpose of the room is, is not so much to be a public room, but to be a, a command and control center. There you go. You can understand that, I guess, to some point, if there's an emergency like that, a hurricane or like that, that's, that's understandable. I don't think we're talking about those situations. Week to week, it's going to be a function room, a meeting room. Is that in writing? What's that? Is that in writing anywhere? Let me, let me tell you what happened in Lakeville, David, that you have to be aware of. We built, we built a meeting room for an additional million dollars. And while it was being built, the, the police chief resigned and we got a new police chief yep. building opened we were told oh no that's not a meeting room that's a police station meeting room and you will have to ask us for permission to use that room and we will decide when you can use it that was not what was discussed during the Bill lakeville building committee meetings when i was invited in there to design that room help design that room i was involved with the architect and and it totally changed after the building was done and open the intent of the room is to be to function as a meeting room. What I'm trying to point out to you is that it is also the, the function of the room has been designed as a command and control room. As we're going to have the cameras, we're going to have all of the things needed, the desks, the tables, the chairs, the, the room itself is a command and control room. However, <laughs> The Board of Selectmen are going to have control over that room. It's not going to be a police room, so to speak. That was the question um, that I was going to have I was going to have to ask, is who has control? The policy is a board policy. It's not a police chief policy. Who schedules it? The <coughs> selectmen? We're going to work. We, we're going to have a calendar. There's going to be, we, I, I guess the, the operational function of the room, I, I, I guess we're kind of off target here. It is going to be used as, as, a, as a, a meeting room. The board is going to meet there. I know the board is going to meet there. 
And I know that other boards, like a planning board hearing where they have a, you know, a crowd of 25, 30, 40 people that we now don't have room for, we can now use that room as, as, a, as a meeting room. So David, quick question. If uh, I think we all agree that we want to run the, the wiring or the conduit through the building to do what we want to do. After that, is the money coming out of the cable committee, cable money, and is that under the control of this committee? It's my understanding it's under the control of the Board of Selectmen. Okay, I could be wrong. I don't know. I haven't looked at the bylaws, so I don't know who controls that account. I do know that we don't have enough money in the, the, the kitty, so to speak. We replenished that money at our annual town meeting to pay for Lake Cam and to pay for Middle Cam, middle, um, free, whatever they call it, Free Cam. Net Cam. Net Cam, whatever. The, those two things are paid through the, the, the funds that are in that account. We basically take money every year out of that reserve receipts account and we transfer it out into an operating account. That operating account then uses that money to pay the contracts for the two companies or the, the two organizations that provide us with services for the cable. It also pays for the camera people who come to the meeting, who set up, record the meeting, edit the meeting, and then pass it off to their respective uh, person to put the thing up on. We put it up on YouTube. They put it up on, on the cable. Now, the, the, the amount that we have in there right now is we have a balance in the account. That's what we're going to be using to pay for the conduit and pay for the wiring. If we're going to do the cam, that's why I'm saying we're going to do the cameras in the fall. After the building is not going to be open until September 1st anyway. So it's kind of premature to be saying that, you know, nothing is going to happen other than the fact we're going to run the power and we're going to run a conduit. The actual purchase of the cameras will come in September and October, okay? The key element of that will be going to a special town meeting and asking for an additional appropriation out of the reserve receipts account to purchase the cameras and all of the stuff that's needed, the server, the uh, any kind of modems that we need, any kind of communication devices that we need to make the system fully operational. At this point, we don't have that money. You don't, you don't have that money. We don't have that money. Nobody has that money. That money is sitting in a reserve receipts account. What kind of input are we going to have on this? I don't, I don't, I'm bringing it to you like I'm bringing this to you. Well, I, know, I know you are, David, and we appreciate that, but I'm just saying. Um, I don't think you'd want to be involved in that. You'd help with the selection of the cameras. I, I think you'd, you know, you'd make a list of what it is that you want to be spending money on in terms of are there other things that we want to do in, in the fall from that money. You, do you want to you know, create a studio over at the elementary school, the FES. We had a little studio over there previous. Do we want to do something over there? Do we want to expand our contract with one of the other vendors? I don't know. You know, that those are all decisions that are down the road. The big decision we got to make, there's two big decisions we got to make in the next three or four months. One is we got to get the wiring in for the police station. Either if you're going to, if you're not going to do it, then, then we, you know, I, I don't know. Where we're gonna get the money? Well, Has you got a change order on that yet? I could, I could do a change. I, I, I wouldn't do it. It's, it would be a board decision to approve a change order. There's been no discussion about that up to this point because we thought we were going to be able to use the cable uh, uh, funds for that. The other thing we got to do is we got to work on getting the new contract in place. And we're going to begin the negotiations July 15th. I sent the letter out. Mike Gala has responded to us. They forwarded us a proposal basically saying that we're going to, they want to keep 1% and they're going to give us 65 grand over 10 years, which is a ridiculous thing. But that's the negotiation. That's what negotiating is all about. All right. Well, let's get back to the police station so that uh, Jose can leave. Yeah. Okay. What? Jose, go ahead. Um, in terms of of um, 
I agree that getting the wiring in now is is a huge, not just time saving, but probably cost savings because everything's wide open. And bringing in companies after the building is open, but all everything's closed up is a much more difficult uh, project. Just running five wires into into the room uh, and back into the control room. Um, in terms of uh, how that's paid for, um, um, the cable advisory committee should be advising the selectmen as, as to how the money should be spent, including exactly what they should be spent for. Um, the selectmen shouldn't be making those decisions unless they have expertise that the cable advisory committee does not have. Um, so that's just my advice. Um, please, please, uh, David, uh, if I could talk directly with the architect, if that's necessary to make sure that, that the message got back to the architect as how this is going to be done, then I, I'm happy to do that one-on-one -on -one with the architect. Okay, did you go over to the police station over here or I'm, just Lakeville? I'm sorry? Did you just go to Lakeville police station? Yeah, it was just Lakeville. I can't get into the other one. Uh, David said it's still not. Okay. Uh, no, yeah, we have we have a, a protocol, a COVID protocol. I, 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 Nobody didn't, can... I didn't know if he had, had the opportunity to go there or could. I didn't know that. Nobody gets into that building without a temperature check and a questionnaire by an EMT. Right. So that's as simple as it gets, you know, that, you know, they have a COVID protocol and, and they restrict, you know, non, uh, essential just, personnel from the building. Basically. I just didn't know if that, if that did happen. That's all. I, I was talked about in the initial meeting about doing both, but and you had talked about the stat, those requirements as well. So I did see the floor plans. So I got a good idea of where, how much space is where. So that helped me to, um, to advise, the uh, the um, the electrical engineer and and as to where the control room should be and as to where the camera position should be. Um, so that worked out really well, I believe. And we do have a, a, a closet. It's a, a it, I, I, I want to say I don't know the dimensions of it, but in our prior discussions, the closet is big enough to accommodate what we want in it, and that will be the control room. Right. Ultimately, with this cutoff switch in the dispatch area. And, and I did discuss the cutoff switch with, uh, again, um, Andy and the electrical engineer. And I highly recommended that only the cameras be on that switch, that the, the control room needs to be, all, the electricity to that room needs to be on. And the reason is, if we are to go virtual and hybrid, with Zoom and meetings inside, and we want to control the equipment from the outside, then that equipment should be on. The cameras can be controlled by the dispatcher so that no signal comes out of the meeting room unless the dispatcher flips the switch. Well, the other, the other part of that is, um, is that we have to have some control over it because when we have an executive session, or any board or committee has an executive session, we're not going to want that information to be broadcast over the air while, uh, uh, if the meeting is live, or, it, well, it can be edited out after the fact. Um, you, don't want to, you do not want any, any recording of it at all. Right. Okay, well, I, I'm just saying to you that there, you know, I don't know if it's going to be live or not live, if it's not live. I just want to be able to shut the system down and have the executive session. That's well, what I want to do. So, David, what are you suggesting that, what are you suggesting at this point? Uh, ex, I mean, talking about the wiring, the, the wiring of the building to facilitate what we want to do. What are you suggesting that this committee does? I'm suggesting that we, we get the proposal in from the from Andy in terms of uh, what he's you know suggesting in terms of how to wire it up okay. at the drawings, and uh, once we get a, a a a quote from the current subcontractor, 
um, that we move forward and, and put the wiring in, the power in, and put conduit in, in accordance with the plan that was discussed between Jose, between Andy, and between their, actually there was an engineer there also, the engineer is the one that, that drew up the plan. Okay. Because so, Andy doesn't do, Andy doesn't run like electrical cables and all of that. They do that as part of the, their architectural work, but he re relies upon other people to, to, to do those kind of things. Right. Uh, Jose? The shutoff that you want inside the room for yourself as a process uh, issue, that was not discussed at all in, in terms of the electrical setup. That would be we a- We discussed it today at our, our team meeting. It came up, okay. It's understood that that will control, there'll be a switch and it'll be a some kind of a light that'll, when the light is red, it's live. When the light is not red, it's not live. The power is on, power is off. I understand that, but as of, as of the meeting I had with the electrical engineer and Andy, there was only gonna be one switch and that was in the dispatcher's office. What I'm suggesting is you may wanna ask for a second switch inside the room, inside that chair and table room that you can go in there and flip the switch to shut everything off. Because otherwise someone has to walk out to the dispatcher and say, please shut off the, uh, the power. Well, that's a possibility. Like I, I don't, I don't see that as an obstacle. But no, it's not. A, it, it's just one more switch that, or one more connection that needs to be made. One more safeguard. Yeah, well, not just safeguard, but as, as for instance, if, if the town administrator or town manager wants to shut off the the cameras um, within the room, then there's got to be a switch somewhere in the vicinity for that person to turn it off themselves and not have to walk out to the dispatcher and ask them to shut it off. That's all. Yeah, I've actually have done that in other communities where I've worked. I've controlled the, the on and off, particularly, you know, the start of the meeting, I say, well, I'm turning the cameras on, make everybody aware, we, we start the meeting, we, the board votes to go in an executive session, we turn the cameras off. You know, it's that simple. And it was a simple switch that was underneath the table uh, very, you know, very simple, very elegant, and very, you know, it did what we wanted it to, to do. What, and that's going back 20 years ago. We're kind of on hold right now until we get any information from them pertaining to the uh, the, the uh, running of the wires or the, the conduit or whatever. Is that correct, David? I would say that is correct, but things are moving fast over there. That's what I'm, I'm trying. I guess that's what I'm trying to communicate. Is that we're we're in the, the we're on the last lap of this project. I mean, we're we're the interior finishes are starting to be. They get they actually first they they got power today for the first time, so they have real electrical power. They're not using generators. They're, everything is moving. The cable lines are installed. The Verizon, the E nine one one, all the way down the line. We're we're, we're you know we're moving on this, so I w I don't want us to what's you know come frame? up to. What's the time frame? I, I would say, David, that the Labor day. the whole no day. the whole the hold up right now is getting the getting the the pricing on this. Is there, would, we could we could have done it tonight if we had the pricing today. Is that correct? That's true. Yeah, and I had I had asked for that, and it's unfortunate. But he 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 when he said it, he he said that it might take some time to get it. So in mm -hmm. his defense, at Dan's defense, he did say, "I'm going to try to get the pricing." I said, "Well," and I explained that to Dan today. I said, "Dan, we have a meeting tonight. If you can get me those prices tonight, let me take this. Let me check my mail too, because I, I don't want to be talking off the record here." If he got it to me after I left the building. Josh, do you have any questions or comments you'd like to make, Josh? Yeah, I just want to make sure we got we know the number. I mean, I agree with Jose's uh, one of his uh, suggestions there about having um, it come out of the current uh, police budget and then we reimburse that budget um, if that makes sense. It's not going to happen like that. It's not coming out of the police budget. It's coming out of the cable advisory committee budget. It's not coming out of the police budget. It's going to be paid for out of the cable advisory reserve receipts, which we have money in that account. All right. Yeah, I must have been confused. I thought that they said they couldn't 
the, the way we'd have to pay for that. The, the way well, there's 11,000. Is that what it is, David, left over? Yeah, we have 11,000, and, and we, we carry that forward. It's encumbered. Yep. And then we repl we just replenished it at right. the annual town meeting. So now you, I, I want to say it was uh, 20,000 more. So now we have 31,000 in that account. We have additional funds there that we're going to use at the special town meeting to purchase the cameras and do all of the, the work that we need to do. But that's down the road. This is a short time. This is a short term thing. We want to get the wires in. Oh, we don't. We don't want to use that. We can't use that or shouldn't use that money that was allocated at the town meeting because that's for the operation. No, when it, no, that would no. That twenty thousand is the money we, we use to pay the two contracts exactly. and to, pay, to pay the camera people. Right. There's right. no intention to use that money. But so we basically got eleven thousand. Yeah, we, and that was from over the course of the year. We, we you know because of the whole COVID thing, right. we didn't have as many meetings. We we went virtual. There were savings there. There were savings every year. It just rolls forward. It's one of those things you encumber and you push it forward. Okay. And Lake Cam has not been paid from January, and I haven't in, uh, invoiced you for July yet. Um, and that's a total. Well, once again, I, we, you, we, we've contacted you guys about a contract. I know, I know. And the last I heard, it was with the chair. So, uh, well, and, and that's an issue. So contract from us what's that you do not have a new signed contract from us correct you do not have a signed contract and i know tim has contacted i, I don't know who's contacted at least a couple two or three times to tell them to tell you that we haven't got ha, had a contract and if we're going to be if we have money from this fiscal year that we owe you i need to know that now because the fiscal year is closing on tuesday if i had to uncover those funds you know, we can't, I don't know. I, I'd have to talk to the accountant about that, how that would work. I'm going to try to get back to you by tomorrow on that. How, how late are you working tomorrow? I'm not working at all, actually. I'm on vacation starting tomorrow all the way through next week. So, But I'm going to be working. I'm going to contact Tim tomorrow. All okay. right. I have no problem. Like I said, we, we, I, you know, we're not, the town accountant will not allow us to pay for a service that we don't have a contract for. That was explained right up front. So I'm until we have a contract, we yeah. can't pay you. That's as, as simple as it is. Things became very difficult, as you know, as soon as March 18th rolled around. So that that's the reason why you, you don't have a signed contract yet. But can I get back to the shutoff switch in the room or somewhere in the room? The table switch you had 20 years ago was probably on in a fixed table. That that was not moving ever in that room. My it's agreeable. It was a selectman. It was a board of selectmen. It was a meeting room, just like this is going to be. No, it's not. This is different because all those tables are going to be portable. They're not going to be. They're not going to be screwed down. So you need to put somewhere that's permanent, like inside the chair room, that only you know is there. I don't know how the room is going to be configured. I, I, I'm, you, if you have some inside information, I, I don't know that, that that's the case. I, I know that there are going to be certain things that are fixed. So, well, okay. Are you, Jose, are you saying that all the, all where, where the room where all the components are going to be, that's where the switch should be? Somewhere, somewhere that's accessible from, that, from, to someone who's in that meeting, simply to walk over here to right. the and, and flip the switch. But that switch should be uh, inside, I suggest, the chair room or, no, not the kitchen, the chair room, which is usually closed, that only people who need to know know that switch is there. We're going to have that, that control room is going to be locked. We're having a louvered door in there. I'm not talking and about only the people, only a person with a key is going to be able to get into that room. Understood. I'm talking about there's another room off the meeting room, it's called the chair slash table storage room. It's, it's much larger, and there there are doors inside the meeting room that you simply open to go get more chairs or tables or put them away in that room. That's where I'm suggesting that switch be put. Uh, that's it. That's the same switch as the one in the dispatcher's room. So you have a three-way uh, switch that can control the cameras. You I, want us to put I those... wouldn't put it in there if it's it's publicly accessible. It is not locked. I don't want anybody to have control of those cameras if people are not in the meeting room. 
somebody could go in and do, you know, I don't know. I, I don't want anybody without access to be turning on and off those cameras. Put it in the key box. Well, you... what? A box that's got a lock on it. Or just, or just walk up to the dispatcher, you know, which is Fine. 50 feet away and just tell the dispatcher, turn the video off. I'm sorry, I thought it was, I thought it was more like 30 feet away. But once again, you know, I... I don't know, I haven't seen the room. <laughs> sorry. I haven't even seen the blood of the lail. Leave that alone. Leave that alone. Um, are we almost done? I think we're, I think we're all set with uh, Jose about the uh, police station. I mean, David. As soon as you get the get the the yeah, I'll call a quick meeting. If, meet, if you guys can we'll meet, call a meeting. I don't know, Josh. You gotta have what twenty four hours to call a meeting or forty eight hours. You gotta have forty eight hours. Okay, so within forty eight hours, we can contact Josh, and uh, I don't know what's going on with Bob. I'm gonna run by his business and see how see what's going on by. I was gonna do it today, but I was tied up all day. So yeah, I haven't I haven't talked to him in a while, so I'm not sure what's going on either. But uh, so if that's okay with you, Josh, uh, as soon as we get the numbers, we'll call a meeting within 48 hours where we can, we can chat, chat about it and make a decision. That sounds good to me. Sounds wonderful. Is there a meeting scheduled for Tuesday at five? No. Okay, I, somehow I have that on my calendar. Maybe I just confused it with today's. No. This, this committee, no. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, thank you for allowing me to advise, and I hope uh, I was helpful and not too combative. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm, you know, I'm just trying to get do my job. My job is to make sure things get done, and you know, I'm trying to be expeditious in this. I'm trying to move this thing forward, uh, as you know, I'm being asked to by the board and the most, not so much the board, but the police team that, you know, is, has a member of the board as well as all of the people that are involved in the building of the, of the police station. So I, I want to see it done. I, I'm telling you, you know, whatever we got to do to get it done. You know, I, 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 I think we have a plan, you know, let's get the number, take a look at it and uh, see, you know, how much it's going to be and, and we'll take it from there. All right. Great. Yeah. All right. We still have, uh, uh, Josh, you have like two minutes? Yeah, I got a couple minutes. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jose, we're just going to talk contract here. So. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you all. I'll all right. All right. Thank you, Jose. Thank you. Take all care. Right. Thank you. Okay, David, I got I got the copies of the contract that, that uh, you sent me, both of them, I guess. There was, there was three of them, three letters. The one you sent to... Uh, sent to him and Mike I guess Mike Gala, yeah. yeah. And then the one that he sent back with the recommendations, which like you said, uh, you know, uh, uh, up for discussion for sure. Um, I, I've, been, uh, I've been looking at other cities and other towns and seeing where they fall with a population of similar to us and sub subscribers, subscriptions. And uh, that's a lot of, I mean, there's a hundred pages on there, Josh. I don't know if you had a chance to take a look at it as well, but. I, I took a quick uh, skim through it. I, I mean, I, I really didn't have time to piece through it completely. Um, Most of the document is just, it's, it's legal. It's a, the old contract, it's legal, um, you know, forms, it's exhibits. It's all stuff that, it, all it's, it's basically just a standard contract form. They're basically saying, this is what we want to use for the contract. The, the only thing that really counts is their, their cover letter, which it says they paid the filing fee. Um, they're proposing that, that they keep, we keep it at 1%. And we had some discussion about that. I thought we were going to go to 2 or 2.5%. Two and, um, and the other part was about $65,000 over 10 years, which is what, $6,500 a year uh, for operations, staffing, equipment replacement facilities, and other PEG-related expenses. Well, so far, so far, the, I've, I've gone through briefly the contracts of South Hadley, Westfield, Hingham, Marshfield, Palmer, Quincy, and I've just briefly gone through Lake Village. But it looks to me like most of those, uh, the numbers that you're talking about, the 65,000 on us, is anywhere from 100 to 100 to 250,000 
at 20, at like Hingham is 25,000 per year. And then you've got uh, Palmer, which is 15,000 per year. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, that's it. This is their opening shot, so right, to speak. Right, right. Mm -hmm. so, it's not what we're going to agree to. I can guarantee you that right now. I'm just trying to show you that the disparity be what they want, what they're what they're looking to do, what we we should we should be discussing. You know. Yeah, my only and, concern and, with that is that that's the capital, right? You're talking about. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, my only thing is that is if 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 cable subscriptions fall off drastically in the town. Those people that still keep the cable are going to get hit with a higher burden, I believe. If from yeah, because you're going to have fewer people are going to have to make up more of the cost. Yeah, so I mean, with with the with the actual percentage increase, it just I mean, you you know, it's it's just based on whoever's active in the in the subscription of cable. So it's you know, you're not get you're just getting that two percent across the board. There's no well, there's two components. One is is the percentage which we're going to get every year as a function of, of the cable bill. And then there's a capital cost. They're basically saying, we're gonna give you $65,000 over a period of 10 years, which is $6,500 a year for capital costs. That, that's a bargainable issue. We yeah. can go back to them and say, no, you, you know, based on communities of comparable size uh, that you're located in, this is what you're giving them. We want the same amount. But the lowest, the, uh, let's go to the percentage on that. The lowest percentage out there from those towns that I mentioned was two and a half percent, two point five percent. Yeah. Everyone else except for Lakeville is five percent, and Lakeville I think is four point five. You got to so, you have to be careful with with the that part of it because that money that comes in is is assessed to the the residents. Well. It's, that's not an outright grant from charter, uh, not charter, from Comcast saying that, oh, oh we're going to give you 65000 or oh, we're going to give you X amount of dollars out of our pocket. The, the, the percentage is based upon um, the, uh, right. what's best to the resident. Right. But, but I, I also did research and I took my own bill because my own bill at my company here is is probably three or four times larger than it would be in a normal household and with my bill here that percentage comes out to a dollar something dollar eighty something a month all right yeah, so, that, yeah. i mean it's not it's, it's not, not like enough. if i thought it was going to be a, a situation where it was going to be a lot of money but again if you're going to extract this money from the subscribers we need to as a committee i think come up with a plan to give that back to them. We've been keeping on, holding on to that money for the last three years or more. It's been longer than that. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, you can't take something and not give something well, back. That's where we can talk about having our own studio or right. you know, who knows, I, I, we could go to Middleborough and, and, and see if they have a brand new studio, you know, say, all right, we'll, want, we, we'll pay you X amount of dollars to, uh, do some local broadcasting, put a, you know, do, you know, uh, uh, or like we talked previously about talking to the school, the potential for that, or yeah. talking to Lake Cam and say, you know, hey, you're close, we can, if we can use your studio, then, you know, that that's something we can rent space from the studio or do that kind of thing, so. We need, we, the other, the other thing that we also get is a 50, per, 50 cent per subscriber. Fee. Yeah, I'm not totally sure. Is that I, is that capital based, or, is that, or I don't know. I don't know what the what the what how the capital comes out. Does that come out in a different number or? That fifty cents they give it to us like one check a year. It's like twelve hundred right. bucks. Right. So, but that but every 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 town and city in the state has that fifty cent deal. Yeah, from what I can the percentage, see, the the percentage is is where the the real money is. But you, like I said, you got to be careful because you don't. They want to see it at one percent because if it's at one percent, the the bill won't go up. Well, if, you got you got to find out that. It, it, I mean, in all honesty, I mean, I like I said, I'm surprised that it's only you said it's like a buck eighty. That's all I pay is a buck eighty here at the business. Wow. With that, with how many subscribers do we have again in? Uh, uh, I, I haven't got I haven't got to that point yet. 
I have, have what, nine th we have what nine thousand residents or something. Yeah, there's not that much. I I have seventy. I have the I have the list that I got and I downloaded it from the Massachusetts uh, website, but I I don't have the number in front of me, Judge. All right. And we have other things we want. We want the high def channel. We want a, a character generator. We want there's a list of things that I had. Uh, had presented to you guys, you know, in addition to. And if you look, if you look at, if you look at the only co the contracts, the only contracts that I looked at were the ones that were just done in 2019 or have been done in 2020. Yeah. So prior to that, say like July of last year, I didn't even review any of those contracts of, of those cities and towns. So I'm trying to keep it where it's close and the one what you just mentioned David about those uh, what we also wanted seems to be consistent with what everybody else is getting yeah yeah and if it's that nominal then you know maybe we might want to look at you know more but once again you have to justify it you have to say yeah. hey this is what we're going to use it for right you know? that's, that's where I keep we're trying to draw the debate too is like what's what's the actual percentage of the capital split between the increase I mean is the, is the capital going to be, is it like a 5% and then whoever, if people drop out, it goes much higher or is it even, is it even? No, less? it's locked in, it's locked in for the 10 years. I don't think that capital is, does that, cap, educate me, David, does that capital expenditure come come from the subscribers or come from Comcast? That I, I'd have to, I'd have to look at. I, I want to say it comes from Comcast. That's it. I, I, I thought in a previous meeting, I, I don't know if it was Jose or not. I wish he was here still to ask, but I, th I thought that that came off the subscribers too, but it was, uh, I mean, it came off of, you know, it divided up among the 10 years among whoever was paying for cable within those years. Yeah, like I'd have to take a look at that. It was my, I, I, from my previous contracts that I've worked at, worked on with charter and other communities, it was, it was a, uh, I'm pretty sure the capital came out of uh, or was was basically a contribution to the town from the from the uh, cable vendor. Oh, if, if that's if that's the case, I definitely would want to ask for more of that. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely you know that's ridiculous. Sixty five thousand dollars. That's not even. That's, yeah. Yeah. And, you know the, the 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 situation is this: is that if it was if it was just for like four years or five years, you may be able to live with it. But when you're talking ten year time frame. You know, with everything that goes up, inflation and everything like that, that's peanuts. Yeah, we may want to, that, that's not, even that's negotiable, you know. We could yeah. say, hey, we don't want 10 years, we want five. We'll see yeah, in five we, years, you know. We should try to double the capital then if it's not going to burden the subscribers that much. Uh, I'm telling you, at least double. Yeah, yeah, at least. I mean, that would be a minimum in my mind. Well, like I said, the, 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 the lowest one I found so far was Palmer, and that's a, that was uh, 150000 during the year, and they were getting 15000 every year. Yeah. I mean, yeah, every year. Well, if you doubled it, that's what it would be, right? Uh, 130, yeah. Yeah. So, and they're a comparable community. Yeah. Population-wise. Yeah, I, I, I got to look at the subscription, uh, you know, uh, population. Just I'm going to look, too, over. back in that contract at some point. Um, um, a little busy this week with the work, but um, I want to check in to, to see. I think they might say what that subscriber – uh, the capital it goes to the subscriber or not, or how that's allocated. I think that might be in there um, from what I've gl glanced over, but I'll, I'll have to take another peek at it to really um, ascertain that. Okay, good. Actually, uh, Jose, when he, um, about that whole contract issue, that's going to, that could potentially be an issue in and of itself because if, that 11,000 that Kim had said we have in the remainder in the account, that means that we now only have 6,000 instead of 10. What does he get a year, uh, a quarter? Uh, I, want, I, was, I want to say it was five. I could be wrong. I'm so, sorry, gentlemen. I have to. Um, All right, that's I'm fine. A little far behind, a little behind on. All right, no problem. I, I get it. So right. I'll, if, we, if we have a meeting, I'll, I'll let you know and, and we'll, we'll move quickly. You want to adjourn the meeting, David? Yeah, uh, yeah, you should do that. Okay. Josh, want to make a motion to adjourn the meeting? I uh, make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Josh, signify by saying aye. Aye. Yeah. Roll call. Self aye.
Okay, David. All right, I will turn off the recording part of this. Let me figure out how to do that. Yeah. All right, there we go. I'm, I'm uh, stopping it. Do you want to stop?